There are loads of great reasons to cycle indoors. It's really time efficient. You can fit it easily around your other life commitments. You can also train in a way that you just can't on the road and it doesn't usually rain inside. There are also some really rubbish reasons to cycle indoors, such as of course, if you're not actually allowed to go outside. Well, fear not. In this video, we're gonna show you what you need cycling doors. You only need to invest in a couple of bits of equipment and then you're away, so to speak. Firstly, we're gonna look at dedicated exercise bikes versus an actual bike. So for many of us, indoor cycling involves the kind of bike you'd find at the gym or the vintage exercise bike that you find at your grandma's house. Well, spend any amount of time on one of those and you will quickly lose your mind. Fortunately, there are better options. Firstly, the easiest thing to do is to use your actual bike and connect it to an indoor trainer or turbo trainer. You do this by suspending the back wheel over a flywheel, which creates resistance against the rear tire and simply pedal away. Now a quick Google search reveals that you can get basic indoor turbo trainers for as little as hundred pounds or hundred dollars delivered to your door. But if you go on eBay and get a second hand one, even less. And broadly speaking, there are three different types. Now, the cheapest are usually wind resistance generators, so they're quite loud and quite noisy. Then you have magnetic resistance in the flywheel. Usually you can adjust this by way of a lever as well, so you can increase or reduce the resistance. And then there's fluid resistance. And these get progressively more expensive. Fluid would be my choice, but it depends upon your budget. With your turbo trainer ordered, all you need to do now is to set your bike onto it and then put something under the front wheel to just raise it slightly to get you in a better position. I'd suggest an old yellow pages if you've got one lying around. So they're the essentials, but there are some other bits of equipment that we'd recommend. So something that you can put under your indoor training setup to catch sweat. Now there are dedicated mats that you can buy, but these can be quite expensive and there are less expensive options. So a yoga mat works really well, or a towel or an old bit of carpet, or your, your actual living room carpet. Sorry, mum. Cycling indoors can get really hot as well because you don't have the cooling effect of the air brushing past you as you ride outdoors. So there are a few things you can do to cool yourself down. Firstly, fans are really useful. So if you've got an old fan lying around, by all means dig it out. If you don't, again, you can pick up fans pretty cheaply these days, so a couple of those would be useful. And also I recommend having some fluids to hand and also probably a towel that you can just wipe the, the sweat off as well. And lastly, if you're riding indoors with slick road bike tires, you'll find it's much quieter on a turbo trainer than if you use a treaded tire or a mountain bike tire. These will create much more noise, a proper racket, which could be really annoying for your other people you live with or your neighbors. So you can buy like a slick tire and put that on your bike and we'd recommend it. There's actually dedicated tires for turbo trainers. They're not essential, but they do work really well. They're designed for it and they actually save your tires from wearing down as well. They're really hard wearing and don't wear out on the trainer. Next, I'd highly recommend that you have some sort of entertainment when you're riding along, something to follow like a gym class. If you just jump on your bike with nothing to follow, then I guarantee even if you start with the best intentions, after about 30 seconds, you will be completely bored out of your brains. Now, some people like to turn on the TV or watch a movie, and this definitely works. But again, without having any sort of structure to follow, after about 30 seconds, you probably feel like you just sat on an uncomfortable version of your sofa. Instead, I would suggest you follow something that gives you purpose. A workout where it tells you when to pedal hard, when to pedal easy, and by breaking the workout down into those little manageable chunks with little goals, it will just fly by. Now perhaps here at GCN, we can help you out with that. We have a massive library of free online sessions available on YouTube where you can follow indoor training workouts. They also feature guidance from some incredibly inspiring, charismatic and handsome individuals. Seriously, who wrote this? 
anyway. There's everything from short, intense 15 to 20 minute HIIT workouts, right through to 60 minute epics and everything in between. You can do a lot of great quality work in a short period of time on an indoor trainer and burn a stack of calories and get mega fit. So there you go, that's the basics covered. It really is as simple as that. One final thing just to pay attention to, and that is the kind of axle your bike has at the back. So if it's a disc brake bike, whether it has a through axle or a quick release skewer. Now most indoor trainers support quick release skewers. So just check that your bike is supported by the trainer that you're gonna get. Higher end, more sophisticated turbo trainers give a much more realistic and immersive indoor riding experience, such as direct drive trainers. Now, a good example is the Wahoo Kicker. You remove your back wheel and directly attach your bike onto it. They weigh an absolute ton, but that's good because it means that they have a really heavy flywheel, and the really heavy flywheel is able to generate a lot of inertia, which translates into that realistic riding feel. It feels like riding a bike outdoors. More than that though, they are also smart, so they can connect wirelessly to your computer or tablet or whatever you're using and the resistance can adjust automatically depending on the kind of terrain you're riding in a virtual world. So they can simulate hills and descents. And this is the ace card of smart trainers because they take indoor cycling to just a whole nother level that's just way more immersive and way more entertaining. And there's loads of software and platforms out there that you can put on your laptop or your tablet or your smartphone and then connect to the trainer. So you've got ones like Sufferfest and Trainer Road. These have structured workouts in them that can be tailored to your actual fitness levels and then you follow those and there's like entertainment and stuff that comes up on screen to make it you know more stimulating and then there are others that allow you to ride in virtual environments so you've got Kino Map, Ruby, RGT Cycling and the big hitter of course Zwift and there's a social aspect to these as well because you can actually ride with people that you know and other people who are riding with their avatars also in the virtual world. This is great because it effectively allows you to escape the isolation and confines of your house and interact with other human beings, albeit in a virtual environment. You can do races on there, group rides, all sorts, and you'll find all ability levels as well from absolute beginners right through to Tour de France champions. Right, well, I hope you found this video useful. And if you've got any questions about indoor cycling or training, then just post them to us on social media and we'll do our best to answer them and get back to you. Also, if you want to see a video on a budget basic Zwift setup and what you need, then we've got that as well down here. Oh, and you can also click on screen for some GCN free indoor workouts.